Welcome to the Ops Group Series Moose Scripting videos. This video will describe the Orftrag class. Beware each presentation in the series includes a building block of knowledge, and there can be terms explained from previous videos. Watching these in order makes the best sense. What are Orftrags? A basic sense if you imagine you're in a restaurant and you ask the waiter for some food he writes down your order and then goes to the kitchen and your order's made up and it comes out and that's that's basically it the order that's written down is an off track the literal word means order in german off tracks are executed at the minimum of a dcs group level but they can be executed at higher levels and those are created by the ops groups that we'll talk about later. An off track is equivalent to a DCS AI task. What are off tracks? If you have a look at the documentation for off track, you can see that they are a list of different types of tasks. And the easiest way to think of these is that if you compare this to the mission editor you'll see there is a parity of sorts in that you can get the same AI task as you can do in the mission editor there is not a one-to-one -one parity with these uh, but it's a, a good way to start initially understanding them the basic features of Orftrag is that it's a, a DCS en route or perform task task with enough presets that the default only really requires one line of Lua. For the route, the mission task, a single destination is created, so there's not a vast amount of scope for creating complex waypoints. Off tracks contain more than just the data about the task. What they can do additionally, and this is additional to the DCS task, is that you can stop them and start them at specific times. You can add priority and urgency to the to an off track, but this, this only really means something when you have two to compare to each other. Uh, options and command tasks, which we talked about in the earlier DCS task video, they can be added directly into the off track. And you can also have conditionals to start and stop based on pretty much any logic that you can come up with. One thing that, that defines off track in a in a way that DCS tasks really can't can't get to easily is that they can measure success or failure. Uh, and success or failure can be quite ab abstract, depending on what the actual task is. Uh, but if it's a, a task that needs to destroy a unit, then success may be quite obvious. Off track tracks the, the life cycle of the group involved. So it can tell if a group is uh, in progress, alive, um, or has died uh, later on during the execution. And that's important. Some of the advanced features are that we've created a set of finite state machine hooks and that allows you to see if the the off track is queued uh, uh, as in it's sitting in a plan and uh, or it's be when it's been requested you need to check the FSM hooks and documentation to see exactly what you can tap into. Off tracks can be issued now, not only to the group level as we spoke about but to a number of new hierarchical structures um, and this is where it's going to get super interesting because the ops groups above uh, a simple group level um, can do more funky things with a, an off track but what they can do is they look at the the target and they can decide how the execution of the off track is, is taking place and that means it doesn't necessarily mean that a plane might execute an, an order or an off track later on. Uh, it could be executed by a ship or an artillery piece. And this is where the AI begins to shine because it can make those intelligent decisions on the best use of assets. 
finally the top level of those ops groups is a chief class and the chief class amongst other things can create its own auth tracks so how does the code look using uh, an auth track uh, basically once they've been defined with the new auth track uh, code then they are delivered to an ops group via the add mission auth track function we'll show you uh, two different ways uh, to execute an auth track. One's going to be at the flight group level and the other is going to be at the commander level. So the first one's the flight group. We've seen this this code snippet before. You're looking at the line that says CAS auth track equals auth, auth track new CAS. That is the defining feature of that auth track is where it goes and where it's executed, what speed, etc. Um, and then the second part is the uh, instantiation of the flight group. The flight group is part of the ops groups that we're talking about, um, and these are the only things that can receive an auth track. So the flight group is created from that actual DCS group, and the mission is added. Now that's the flight group level, which is the lowest part. But what about a commander example? Well, this is this is very truncated and it's very snipped out. But we defined a commander uh, called Monty at the beginning of this, and he has two air wings, which are another layer of um, the hierarchical ops groups. So with the commander having two air wings uh, and being started, we can create this auth track, which is a new intercept, and then add the mission not to the flight group or anything specific or even to the air wing what we can add, do is add them to the commander the commander then takes the auth track he looks at his resources and assets he has two air wings they're available and he can then issue that auth track down the command structure or the hierarchical code structure until it's executed by the most appropriate subservient level. So that is the basics on uh, auth track but what we're really seeing now is how ops groups are very 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 important with regards to how auth tracks are executed and this will be this topic of the, the next videos.